Hey, welcome back everybody. We're gonna work on ArdsNet protocol next, okay? Not talking about ARDS, we're just talking about the mechanical ventilation protocol for ARDS because the MBRC tests extensively on this. So, one slide ought to do it, okay? So, really these are the main things you need to pay attention to over here. So. If we end up with a patient that goes into acute ventilatory failure because of ARDS, we're not going to mess around with the trial run of BiPAP. We're going to go ahead and commit to intubating them, put a tube in, put them on the vent. Okay. When you put them on the vent, we need to use a full support mode. So you're really talking AC mode. So you can use volume ventilation where we set the tidal volume, or you can use pressure ventilation where we set the pressure. Okay. Either one is fine to use for ARDS. But one of the things that you really wanna monitor is your plateau pressures. The plateau pressure should be kept between 25 and 30. Let me say that a little bit differently. You need to keep the plateau pressures less than 30. That is one of the things that you really, really, really need to monitor when you have a patient with ARDS on the vent. Now, if your plateau pressures rise above 30, the strategy is to reduce the tidal volume. Okay, so everybody we put on the vent, we put them in on the vent at about six to eight mLs per kilo of ideal body weight. But in ARDS, as their plateau pressure rises, we want to decrease their tidal volume. So that strategy is called low volume ventilation, right? Low tidal volume ventilation. And the MBRC likes to use four to six mLs per kilo. So basically you drop the tidal volume until you can get those plateau pressures between 25 and 30, all right? So now here's the deal. When you drop the tidal volume, you're gonna have to increase the respiratory rate to make enough minute volume to remove CO2 and stabilize the pH. But Really, you don't want to go any higher on conventional ventilation than 35 on the respiratory rate. Now, here's the deal. A lot of times with some people even doing that, they're going to retain CO2 and we're going to let them. That's called permissive hypercapnia. And so the theory is, is the patient's CO2 starts to rise and then hopefully the body will start retaining bicarb to compensate for that extra acid, the CO2 that's in the bloodstream and it'll stabilize the pH. Now that doesn't happen all the time. So if you're working with permissive hypercapnia and their pH falls less than 7.30, you can initiate a bicarb drip. That's gonna be acceptable when you're taking this exam. All right, so the other thing to remember is your PaO2s. We want to target the PaO2s 55 to 80. Let me say that a different way. If you can get the PaO2 at 55, be happy with that, okay? We're not going to get it 80 to 100 as severe ARDS. We're going to be lucky to get it to 55, okay? But for testing purposes, you want to target a minimum of 55. Um, now, you may have to use a significant amount of PEEP to do that. And if you do, ArdsNet says keep that PEEP lower than 24, okay? So now another thing to think about, if you're still having oxygenation problems despite excessive PEEP, you can think about inverse, i.e. ratio ventilation. Anytime you make the I time longer than the E time, mean airway pressure increases, well, PEEP increases mean airway pressure also. Anytime mean airway pressure is increased, the patient will oxygenate oxygenate better. Here's the thing you have to worry about though, PEEP and inverse IE ratio. You're gonna have to watch for side effects, okay? If you increase that mean airway pressure, there's a significant risk of decreasing venous return and the blood pressure's decreasing. So watch out for that, okay? Um, so this should really cover most everything with mechanical ventilation and ARDS. Uh, join me soon and we'll talk about the next protocol. See you soon.